Hello everybody, this is Scott coming at you straight from the Lion's Den. I'm doing another uh, request video. As you can see, I got everything here set up. I got a couple here coming up. Uh, I was requested to uh, do a side-by-side -side comparison on burning or burn time here using the GSI Minimalist. Uh, a gentleman uh, posted a PM to me wanting to know about, uh, you know, the how long it took. Uh, I guess he got a, a mini heat and he's never used alcohol stoves before, at least not like this type, uh, apparently. And uh, I guess that burned a little bit longer than he was uh, he expected. It. But he also has a fire plug. So in my next video, I'm going to do the, the side by side because as you can see, I have two GSI minimalists. Uh, what was quest requested was a comparison in burning time and just how it works in between the hiker and the mini heat since he is looking at wanting to have both. Uh, and then with his fire plug, I guess he had a few issues with it, um, especially being the first time having something like this. So that's what I'm going to focus on in this video is the the fire plug itself. And uh, this one happens to be my own design. Uh, not that there's really any difference in it, except for the fact of how I had to do it to make it work. So uh, let's get on with it here and uh, we'll cover that in this one today, okay? Uh, this is my version of the fire plug. When I bought, or when I bought the components for this, when I made this, the difference being is Robbie only had a few on hand, and uh, I wasn't able to order one before they were gone, and he was waiting for the parts. He showed how to make one. So what I did was, uh, being that I'm, I'm out here on the West Coast, you know, our, our parts are different, and I'm noticing that that even in the in the same area depending on where you go is going to depict on what they carry because I mean we are talking uh, you know just PVC connectors and stuff that are uh, it's kind of what's on demand in the area what the contractors use is going to depict on what they carry in your local hardware stores they didn't have a cap that was going to work so what I did was I actually took a uh, a butt cap that happened to be the right size that was just slightly smaller than the uh, cap itself for the bottle. Uh, the bottle cap I used actually was a flip top cap. And what I did was I just literally I snapped it off and I bored out the center of it. And what makes this a little different is the fact that since I don't have the caps that Robbie has which give you a real nice fit on his bottles uh, I've noticed that if you use other caps they tend to leak around the side even with the bottle completely in but because this was a flip top cap in here it has an inner ring that basically seals up against it it's like a like a, a it's like a pressure fitting okay so it works great so it doesn't leak around the bottle and the cap Okay, and what I did was I actually uh, I just took my Dremel and I bored it out a little bit here on the uh, on the PVC cap itself until there was a, a snug fit, and then I just went down a little ways because uh, as you can see, and I'm sorry, I will repeat it, I don't have macro, so I'll post a couple pictures afterwards. This is the actual cap itself that is in a PVC cap. Okay, and what I did was, as you hopefully can see there, I bored it out a little bit there. And that's why this one is slightly also different. Uh, where the majority of the fire plugs that I know of, it's a, it's a 90, meaning here's your port, your fuel line, and then here's where your air port is, okay, or uh, air intake. Being that this is what it is, uh, this being so small that with the bottle on, it can still roll away. Even though I tried to get it where it was flat so it would hold, it can still roll away or move. So what I did was I brought my air port closer. That way I know that when I lift my bottle up, my air port is really close. I make sure it's always on the top. That's the key to this. Uh, the questions I've been getting is, you know, how do you stop it from leaking? I, they're having fuel come out well here's what my plate is for we're gonna hook this up and I'm gonna show you 
Okay. What I did, because this was another question, in here, there's not Mountain Dew or anything like that. Uh, what I did is this is actual water that I put in here for the test. Uh, this has one drop and one drop only of food coloring, yellow food coloring. Uh, if you're going to use food coloring, it really does help so you can see if you use the same type of food coloring in all your fuel bottles, then what will happen is you will always know what is fuel, what it, what something that's non-potable, non-drinkable, so there's never a mistake. It is easier to see so you know how much fuel you got. Uh, but with the carbon felt, it does leave a little, because you are burning something, it does leave a little bit of a stain on the inside, not on the outside where it's noticeable, but on the inside where your carbon felt is in your stoves. This being water soluble, if you are like me and you take the stuff apart, it's real easy just to wipe right out. It's it's not noticeable. It doesn't. It's not anything significant. It doesn't change burn time. It doesn't take efficiency away from the stove at all or anything like that. So if that is a concern, no need to worry about it. They work perfectly fine and they still look beautiful. In fact, on my mini heat, you guys have seen that several times. I use uh, I use this type of setup quite a bit with that. Uh, primarily in the beginning because I was learning how to use the fuel bottles and everything and uh, as you guys can see it makes no difference you guys couldn't can't even tell so okay here's what you do taking cap off and as I do this I'm gonna make make this very clear this is a disclaimer I mean no disrespect I'm not putting anybody down I'm not trying to say that anybody is stupid or anything like that if you guys know all about this and know what you're doing Hey, no problem. This question was merely asked of me, and uh, I tried doing some of this without knowing kind of what I was doing. I was learning, and so I'm just trying to follow the lead of somebody like Robbie, Mr. Smoke Eater 908, who who gives a little more detail about this stuff. And so I'm just trying to share for, especially for those who are newer, who to whether it be using uh, some form of a fuel feeder like this or newer to using alcohol stoves okay this is all meant for informational educational purposes uh, by all means I'm no expert I'm just sharing what I know so fire plug here's what I do I always put it on first okay you got your line hooked up to your stove I I feed the line onto the hose now, granted, you're looking at it, it's going to be at a 90. If you have a fire plug from Robbie, and right here's where my port is. Okay. Here's the catch to this. I'm holding this up so I don't lose it, but here's the catch. When you turn your bottle over, okay, just like you would here, you turn it over and set it down. Let me make sure I move this over some so you can see. I, I apologize. Give me a second here. I want to make sure this is in camera. And you can see. Okay, that's all I did. Now, I'm putting my finger here. There's nothing coming out. Uh, I did super glue it all the way around the cap because, of course, the, the cap is all corrugated around it. So, you know, there's going to be little air gaps. And that is the other thing. Since you are looking at fittings, you have to remember this is not something that's been machined like the stoves have with what Robbie's done where there's precision involved. you got to remember that you are using something that is that is mass produced in bulk uh, a lot of this kind of stuff really is just poured out into molds so there's always going to be that possibility that you might get some imperfections so by all means man get some crazy glue super glue some form of adhesive hopefully something that dries clear if you're having any form of issue and just you know put it around the seals that makes it much easier if you have any little nuances there now, so we can show that this is actually working and flowing, so you know there's no tricks, there's no anything here. I'm going to try to keep all of this in frame as best as possible, so you can see it dripping, hopefully. Sorry, I can't see myself in the camera, so hopefully that's it's all showing there. Okay. The higher I lift the bottle, the more it's going to come out. The lower I put the bottle, the less it's going to come out because you're equalizing it. 
Okay. Now, I'm going to lower the bottle. Okay, and of course, I made a mistake and put my darn bottle on the side there, and I leaked all over myself. Let me clean this up so it doesn't, so it's not confusing here, because that was my mistake. Okay, now, here's what you do while this is feeding, okay? I'm going to lay this down a little bit here, just so there's some in the hose. What you do is this, and I think this is where there might be, um, you know, not knowing, not having the experience, the previous experience of using this, this is where maybe there's a, a little bit of an issue. When you, and that's why I turn it, you see where the fuel line is, okay? It's best, when you turn it, you turn it like this here, okay? You put it on a side, make sure that your nipple is slightly up, okay? So there's, see how like there's this bow in the line? You can lift your line up while, while it's the, the uh, stove is still burning. Just lift your line up. That way it can float back into the bottle. Now, if you look at the, and that's why I did it this way. You see the, you can see how it's not level in the bottle. And that's because the gravity is pulling it. What you do then is you take the bottle and you take it slowly. Okay. Just like so. And I'm going much slower because I'm trying to show you guys something here. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure that you can see this here. I, I don't know how well that's going to show. Right here's my port. Okay. And remember, this does have a lip in it. Even if it's one that you bought, there's a little bit of a lip in there where it catches the bottle. That's how it stops the bottle and doesn't go any farther. So you got to remember when you got when you have fuel coming back, there is that little bit of a lip there where it's going to catch. Okay, it's like a little pocket there. So what you do is if you just take it and you just give it a little bit of time, that way it can drain back in the bottle. You're going to be absolutely fine. Now, as you can see, there's nothing dripping out. It didn't leak all over the place. Now, at the same token, just like when I turned it, and I'm doing this intentionally, that's why the plate's out here. If you turn it where your port is at the bottom or lower than this, you're going to get a couple drips come out, okay? It's just like while this is on, and I'm, I don't hope that shows up. While this is on, you can see there's a little bit there holding on, right? There is always that possibility that you're going to, I'm, for whatever reason, I'm getting really lucky and, and it's not even coming through because it has water, anything like this water, air, it all works the same way. It takes the path of least resistance. But if you go from here, just like I just did, see, because I had it at the bottom, you can see how it's leaking. It's just like pressing on this, even though there's a port here. This is this is all by gravity. There's no reason to put any pressure on it. So if you accidentally grab it a little too tight, it'll do the same thing. See how it's burping out? And it happens the same way when you turn it too fast like this. Okay, you're going to get a little bit, although it's going to be one drop, got to remember you, you're also looking at size and you got that one drop coming down like this. It, it appears to be a lot more than what it actually is. Uh, it does happen. It's not anything major. Of course, it's far enough away from the flame. It's not going to cause a problem. Literally, it's usually one little streak. You can take just a little piece of towel or something, go like that, and you're done. That should hopefully take care of the issue. And then, of course, once you get used to it and you're way more comfortable with it, it really is just the, just like how I'm holding it here, you know, and it's doing its thing. It really is just a, just take it, give it a second or two like so. Flip it right over like so. And you notice I'm always keeping it at a slight angle, giving it a chance to make sure that there is anything it's going to catch there. It's going to be minimal, if nothing. And there you go. So I hope this helps out. Uh, sorry for the boring 14-minute video. Um, if there's any more questions, please let me know. All right, you take care.